All right, digital imaging. Uh, today, what I'm doing is going to go over how you can use uh, image trace to uh, trace images inside Illustrator here. Um, so, what this process does is basically takes an image and turns it into a vector. Uh, so, this is really useful for um, different types of things that you want to do inside Illustrator, and then sometimes it doesn't work quite as well here. And then we're going to use this for creating our cutout line for our sticker here. So I've got two different types of images that I'm using. One is uh, this image here of Mr. Krabs and more of like a graphic image, kind of like a cartoon image here. And then this other one, I've got Iron Man here. Um, when you do this, you want to try to find an image that's going to work well for uh, what you're trying to do here. So like photographic type, type images don't work well. For using the image trace um, which is kind of why I've got this Iron Man one here um, but other types of like kind of like vector drawings or more kind of like graphic kind of comic book drawings um, can work pretty well too uh, so I'm gonna grab a couple of different ones here so um, you can look up whatever you want for this here uh, you can try looking things up a few different ways um, I'm gonna just try I could try looking up like Iron Man vector or I could try looking up like Iron Man graphic, um, and those are all ways you can search stuff up and get more suitable images here. So if I look these up here, uh, I'll find images that are more kind of computer drawn and more kind of simplistic. So they've been broken down into more easier things for the image trace to do here. Um, but I'm going to grab this one and kind of see what this looks like here. So remember, if you look at images on Google, you can see how big the image is. I can also filter things. So if I go to tools, and I'm not for sure why this is kind of showing up weird, um, I can go to size. Oh, this is showing up kind of weird here. Um, that's so weird. Um, so usually, I'm not for sure why it's getting hid, hidden behind here. So anyway, I can go to uh, large, medium, or icon. Large is going to be the biggest size, and so Google will filter those things here um, based on this pixel size. But this one that I have here works pretty well. So like right now, this is 2,000 by basically 1,400 pixels, around 1,000 on the on the longest side or the is probably pretty good here. I'm going to do a right click. I'm going to go to open image in new tab here. And then if I click on this, um, now I've got this magnifying glass. I can click on this and that's going to give me the maximum size of this image here. I'm going to do a right click, go to copy image. I can go back to illustrator here and then I can paste uh, this in here. The image is a, a good sized image. And then I'm working on my sticker which is a four by four size document here. So that's why this is kind of showing up that way here. Okay. All right. So uh, I can do this a few different ways here. I can click on my image. Uh, this image is a PNG. So that's why the background has been deleted. Um, so that's why you don't see a background here. Okay. Um, anytime I click on an image here, up here at the top is my image trace. I can get to my image trace panel a couple different ways here. Um, I can click on this little arrow and I can go to like low fidelity photo. The other way I can do this is if I go up to window, then I can go to image trace, which is in alphabetical order. And I can click on this and open that up here. Um, either way is fine. Let me kind of show you the way that I just normally do it. Um, so I can just go to image. Let's do like um, six color here. Okay. So this will walk through the different process here to do that. And I'm just going to kind of wait um, as it does this. This image is also a pretty good sized image as well here. So that's why it goes kind of slow here. So um, six color means just that. It's broken this image down into six colors. I can change that preset here. So if I click on this, you know, I can do like, let's say like 16 colors and see what that looks like here. Whenever I do the image trace, I always... Um, approach you know depending on the image i always approach it uh, a different way um, so i always just kind of play around with the presets and stuff like that here so um just kind of on deep on some of these so high fidelity photo i usually use on photos so both high fidelity and low fidelity i use on photographs 
um, but that never really looks how you want it to look here and you'll kind of see that um, these are ones that I use more often three color six color 16 colors here shades of gray will obviously break it down into shades of gray black and white logo I'll use sometimes if I'm working on like a graphic for like a logo things like that sketched art I really ever use silhouettes I use sometimes line art and then technical drawing I also rarely use here um, but inside each of these here, I can also change things. So um, I can change my color mode to color grayscale black and white. Um, I can change the uh, palettes. So the amount of colors that's including, I can do like a limited full tone or, doc or document library here so I can load up a palette. And then inside here, I've got this slider and I can control how many colors are included here. So the more, colors that I add the more uh, colors that I'm going to see in this here so if I bring that slider to the right the more colors that I can select here um, this original image doesn't have 26 different colors you know so it's not going to really add more colors to it it's just going to kind of keep it here okay um, so like let's just say that I really like this and I want to work with this here I can close this window here and then I can click on expand because what I want to do now is I want to be able to select all these pieces here okay so if I click on expand now you'll see um, all these blue lines that show the lines that I've made and uh, as if I kind of drew this all out with my pen tool here so if I zoom way in you can see that this works really well on this type of image here um, there are some kind of like telltale signs of this here um, so whenever you see someone's used the image trace you can kind of tell uh, if you've used illustrator a lot here but something like this like the original image um, was like pretty simplistic and graphic and it works pretty well here okay um, i want to delete this background so i can go in and grab my direct selection tool here um, and i can select the white here and delete it that way uh, there's like this piece here that works like that okay right now all this is grouped so i could ungroup this um, usually i also just go in and just use like my direct selection tool here um, these things are all like separate pieces and stuff like that here. So if I wanted to change these um, or select them individually, I could go in and kind of select them uh, individually here, okay? Usually when I do the live trace, um, I will also go back in and kind of do a lot of, a lot of editing as well. Um, but on this image, it looks pretty good here. You know, there's kind of like these parts. So if I wanted to, I can go in and kind of edit this. Um, this is also an example of where I would use like my smooth tool um, so remember with the smooth tool, it's inside my shaper tool. If I double click with my smooth tool, I can change my options here. So like if I really wanted to smooth stuff out, I could bring my fidelity up here or um, and really kind of smooth it down here. And then I would just go back in and select it. And then like if I wanted to round this out or kind of smooth some stuff out, I could grab my smooth tool and just kind of do that and it'll like smooth some of those areas out here. Okay, so you'll see that my smooth tool really kind of like change some of those pieces. Because sometimes when you use the image trace, things just have like a really funny edge or funky edge to it, or it'll be like kind of like chunky. And I want to just kind of like change that here. Okay, so for something like this, this works pretty well. So, like, let's say that I want to, you know, use Mr. Krabs' like arms and like his head for my design, for example, then I would go in and grab my direct selection tool and select this the thing that's happening with this though is that all these pieces are connected so what i would want to do is like disconnect it it's all connected by this black section here so what i would do is go in with like my eraser tool and i'd want to separate those pieces out so that i could get to just um uh just to separate those out so it's not letting me here we go i want to like select this and then grab this so right now everything's connected because it has this blue line or I'm sorry black line um, and I'd want to like disconnect this from all that okay so I would go in and just like separate out uh, this arm from everything else here I'm going really fast here um, but I just want to kind of show you what I mean by like it's all connected um, by this black line and so I want to like separate it all out So then now I can go in with my direct selection tool and select 
like his pants and I could delete his pants and just kind of go in and select those pieces and do that here. And now, even though it looks really bad, um, I've got my arm of this here. I need to ungroup it. I'll just grab my direct selection tool and select it that way. Um, but now I've got, you know, Mr. Crab's arm and like, let's say that I want to like um, use that for my design here, okay? So on this site type of thing, it works really well. It looks really good here. Let's take a look at it here and see how it works with something like this here. So same thing, I can go in and select this and let's say, let's do like low fidelity photo and see what this looks like. I'm gonna actually stop this and I wanna zoom in on this so you can kind of see what it looks like. So I've grabbed this high quality image from the internet and I wanna like, let's say I wanna turn this into a graphic here. So I'll go in and grab this here. I'm gonna click on this. So again, because this is a pretty high quality image, it'll take a little while for it to do its thing here. Um, so depending on the size of the image and then how fast your computer goes, uh, sometimes this goes pretty fast and then other times it goes pretty slow here. So um, Illustrator is basically using AI to go in and turn this image into like a vector graphic here. And because it's AI, you know, it won't turn out quite how I want it to look, um, but you'll kind of see that here. So um, at first it looks pretty good, but now if I zoom way in, you can see there's all sorts of like different pieces um, in this image here. And, you know, if I was standing way back, you know, this looks great. Um, but if I look up close here, I can see all those different paths here. Okay, so um, it really depends on what type of image you want to use for this. If I was like turning this into a billboard and people were going to look at it, you know, like from a highway, they're not going to notice all these different sections here. And I could take this original photo and then blow it up to scale and it would look pretty good. But um, if I was using this for like, you know, a magazine or something like that, then this would look really bad because you would see all these little pieces and stuff like that. I could go in and kind of mess with this here, uh, but I'm not going to. Uh, I'm just gonna uh, kind of work here. So here's a different type of image here. I've got Iron Man. Um, this is like a comic book drawing here. So let's try this again here. So I'm gonna select my image and then let's try, um, let's just try low fidelity photo and see what this looks like here. Okay, so I'm gonna do that. Um, and we'll kind of wait here and kind of see how this turns out. Um, again, it always kind of depends on what it is that you're looking for, um, what you think, what you want it to do. Um, and sometimes it works pretty well, and then sometimes it just doesn't quite work so well here. So we'll see what this does. I really have no idea. I don't know what this image will look like here. I'm kind of curious myself. Um, you know, not too bad. Yeah, I thought this would kind of work pretty well here. Um, so it looks pretty good here. Again, it's got some of these kind of telltale signs here of um, the image trace and I can kind of tell. Um, if I click on expand, I could always go in and kind of change some stuff. So maybe I want to like simplify this graphic down here. Um, maybe I want to go in and use like my shape builder tool and I want to make the sky like just a few colors here. Maybe I just want to kind of combine all those together. I could do that and then um, combine that and kind of simplify my drawing. I'm not going to do this. This thing's moving kind of slow. Um, but for like an image like that, you know, it did a pretty good job. Not, not too bad here. Um, let me show you one last thing that we can do here um, to make your cutout line for your sticker here. So like let's say I've got my uh, image here. I've got my Mr. Gloopers blooper crabs. I've done like a cartoon mashup of um, Mr. Krabs and then the glooper thing that we've done before here. I want to make a cutout line. So if you saw my original cutout line, I want to use that for this here. Um, so remember you can do like a text uh, and for this here. And I want to have my cutout line go around my whole design here. And I want to use that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a copy of this. So I'm just going to hold my alt key and then hold shift. Let me get um, this out of the way here. Oops. OK. 
Okay. And then I want to select this. And what I want to do is I want to make this all one single piece. Um, so I've got this. I've made a copy of it. It's got all my pieces and stuff. Right now this is grouped. Um, so that's fine. And then I've got my text. And my text has been turned into um, an outline. So I selected my text and then did type and did create outlines here. Um, and turn that text into an outline. So I want to select this. And then what I want to do is make it all one single piece. So I can do that a couple different ways. Probably the easiest way is I could use my Pathfinder tool. And if I click this, I will turn that all into one single piece. Um, because what I want to do is do an offset path. Um, there are a couple other things here that are kind of showing up. Um, I'm going to do Object Expand. Because there's these pieces right in the middle. And I think that is going to affect. Yeah. Um, that would have affected my outline here. So what I did was I went to object and expand and then um, what that does is kind of flatten out lines and strokes and then I was able to use my pathfinder and make that all one single piece and you'll see it got rid of um, the spaces in between my letters and stuff like that. Okay, Because basically what I want is I want to have my object be all one single piece here um, so that when I make my cut out line I'm going to use what's called my offset path um, it'll make that all kind of like one single piece um, and look nice and clean I'm just kind of cleaning up this part here for his arm okay so what I'm looking for is all of this being one single piece so that when I select it everything's just filled in and it's all flat and that looks pretty good what I want to do now is I want to go to object and then I'm gonna go down to um, path and then I'm gonna go to offset path. And with an offset path, what it does, let me zoom in here so you can see everything. Um, what it does is it uh, creates a path off of my original one here. Okay. Um, so this looks actually pretty good here. Um, I've done this before. So our document is four inches by four inches. So right now this is set to like 0.1, basically one four, you know, so I could type in like one four and do that. On my joins, I could also do a rounded join and then I'll kind of round this out here and do that. And then I could press okay. The problem is though, that if you see this, it's all like separate pieces. What I want to do is I want to do the same thing again. I'm going to go to my Pathfinder tool. I'm going to make this all one single path. Okay. Then um, I can just change this to like a black line here. And that way you can kind of Attention better see students, this here. This is just a reminder okay. that 8th graders and 6th graders need to report to their first period fire drill line. I'm going to at the end of lunch so that you can attend now, the assembly. Now, uh, I'm just going to change uh, the color here. And then uh, I'm just going to put this behind. Uh, seventh graders, you will be going to pick up your here. backpacks and then go to your flex. Thank okay. you. Hope you all had a wonderful lunch, Mustangs. Okay, and I'm just going to kind of bring this over here like that. I had to ungroup that. And then one last thing is uh, when I did that offset path, there's a couple things that I just want to delete here. So I'm going to delete that and then I'll have my cutout line. So I'll select this, delete it, delete that. And then I'll just line this up with my sticker. I'm going to use a uh, brighter color here and it just makes it easier for when you cut this out. So I'm just going to use this pink um, that I had before here for that. Okay, um, so that's how you can make a cutout line and then how you can use image trace for your uh, cartoon mashup.